Good morning, students. Let's start our discussion for today about volleyball. So volleyball, it's another team sports which is played by players each team. The main goal of the game is to let the ball fall or hit the opponent's court. Today's discussion is mainly divided into four sections. History of volleyball, volleyball court, playing the game, and basic skills. Let's start by having a short review of the history of volleyball. Volleyball was invented by William G. Morgan in 1985. It was originally called Mintonet. Volleyball was designed to be a combination of basketball, baseball, tennis, and handball. Passing the ball in high trajectory to be blocked by the opponent was an offensive style in volleyball. The first YMCA National Championships or Championship for Volleyball was held in 1992 in Brooklyn, New York participated by 27 states. After six years, United States Volleyball Association, or the USVBA, was formed to formulate rules for the game. Then, in 1947, Federation International de Volleyball was founded as the governing bodies of the Volleyball Association. In the Philippines, volleyball was introduced in 1910 by Mr. Elwood S. Brown, who was a physical instructor in YMCA. The Philippine Amateur Association, which is now the Philippine Volleyball Federation, was founded on July 4, 1961 as the national governing body of the Philippine Volleyball. Like basketball, many Filipinos became interested in the game and it is now one of the popular team sports in the Philippines. Now, let's talk about the volleyball court. The volleyball court has three main parts which are the center line which divided the court into 9 by 9 meter court and it is where the net is directly placed. The second one is the attack line, which is placed 3 meters from the center lines, which divides the court into two areas, the front and back row. The last one is the end line or the base line. It is the border line of the volleyball court. The service is done beyond the end line. To give you a clear visual of the volleyball court, here is the diagram. You can easily see where the different areas are. Now, let's talk about how the game is played. The game starts with a service. A player hits the ball from outside the end line. This is called the service, which start the game. The ball should drop on opponent's court to gain a point. The score is determined every end of each run. The team to get 25 points in a set wins. However, the team must win by 2 points. Each team will rotate in a clockwise manner each time it wins a serve. In playing the game, three hits are required per team. A player is not allowed to hit the ball twice consecutively. The play stops when the ball hits the floor or when a rule is violated. Some violation includes stepping on the over the line, during the service, failure to bring the ball over the net, touching the ball with other parts of the body, reaching over the net, and reaching under the net. 
Now, let's have the basic skills. Of course, a player cannot play without having the basic skills to be able to play the game properly. The basic skills are serving, which is hitting the ball to start the game. Passing and receiving, which is hitting the ball from one player to another. Spiking, which is a powerful strike on the ball. It is meant to be an offensive attack of a player. Blocking, it is a defensive move to prevent the ball from going over the net. Okay, watch this video to clear understanding about spiking. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing part three of our beginner attacking series on how to attack a volleyball. If you missed part one and part two, be sure to check them out up here. But today we are talking about how to put the approach and the arm swing together. There are many ways to attack a volleyball. A lot of people like to run a really fast offense. There are some slower ones, but because this is a beginner attacking series, we are going to start with the basics and start slow. So the first important thing to think about is to see the set and then start your approach. We don't wanna run in early because then we could end up under the ball, the timing could get messed up. So when you have a tosser or a setter, you want the ball to leave their hands so you can see where it's going and then you start your approach. We talked about having a really aggressive approach and really using your arms to drive up to the ball. That is super important. Because we're waiting to see where the ball goes, we have to be really aggressive with our feet to make sure that we get there with a lot of power and a lot of momentum to be able to jump. Going hand in hand with waiting for the set also comes staying behind the ball and working on your spacing. You wanna make sure that you are behind the ball so that when you're reaching up, the ball is just slightly in front of you. That will help you get a nice trajectory on the ball so when you finish your arm swing, you can bring the ball down. If you get too far underneath the ball, that's when you're gonna hit the ball up in the air. So wait for the set, do a really strong approach and make sure that you're keeping the ball in front of you at all times. Some common mistakes that I see with beginner volleyball players when they're learning to attack is getting too far under the ball. So if you notice that your attack is going really high and really far out of bounds, there's a really good chance that you're in front of the ball. So that's when it's really important to think about that spacing and to make sure that your arm is extended and slightly in front of you. Another thing that could be happening if the ball is going very far out of bounds is that you're stopping your arm. Remember in part two, we talked about the arm swing and how important it is to make sure that you're swinging all the way through the ball every single time. If your ball, if you're staying behind the ball, but you notice that it's still going very far out of bounds, think about swinging through all the way because you're probably stopping your arm. If you notice that you're hitting the ball into the net, you might not be doing a proper spacing on your attack. The ball might be crossing over your hitting shoulder. So that's another important point. When we are hitting, we wanna make sure that we are getting the ball over top of our hitting shoulder every time. That makes sure that our body is upright, that we're reaching nice and high so that we can extend over the net and into the court. If the ball, if I'm right-handed and the ball is getting to my left shoulder, my body automatically dips and that means the ball has dropped. So it's really important if you're hitting the ball in the net 
or if you're making some errors that you can't figure out, you might be getting the ball over your wrong shoulder. So ball over the hitting shoulder every single time. The last common mistake I see involves timing. Oftentimes, whenever we see the set getting ready to be released, we start our approach because we really want to hit it. If you are early on your approach, you will be falling from your jump as you're trying to hit. So the chances of you hitting in the net are pretty high. Also, if you're late, that means that the ball is going to be dropping too far by the time you jump. So you're going to be hitting the ball really, really low. Be patient, let the setter release the ball, and then go after it. You want to feel like your body is rising and that you're extending as high as you possibly can when you make contact. If you don't feel like your body is rising and on the way up to hit, your timing is a little off. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for sticking with me for this three-part How to Attack a Volleyball series. I hope I was able to break it down for you, but if you have any questions, please be sure to let me know in the comments. And until then, I would really, really appreciate it if you would like this video and subscribe to this channel, and please stay tuned for more volleyball-related content. Thanks! Okay, another video clip about blocking. In this video, you'll learn how to block. Blocking is not counted as a touch of the ball. Follow these three steps in order to block effectively. Prepare, jump, and block. Firstly, prepare. Stand about 30 centimeters from the net. Move towards your opponent by sidestepping or by running along the net. Keep your feet parallel to your shoulders and your legs very slightly bent in order to be ready to jump. Reach your arms up and bend them with your forearms parallel to the net and with your hands at head height. Secondly, jump. Always begin your jump just after your opponent jumps. Simultaneously push with your legs and raise your arms. Jump vertically, keeping your head high and your eyes on the ball. Once in the air, stretch your arms with your hands open and your fingers spread to have maximum surface area for the block. Thirdly, Block. Adapt your block depending on the two following situations. If you are late or your opponent is bigger than you, block defensively. For this, bring your hands back towards your head, bending your wrists. Try to slow the ball during contact in order to retrieve it afterwards. If the ball is very close to the net or the opponent is smaller than you, block offensively. For this, bend your body forwards so that your arms and hands can enter into the opponent's court. Don't forget to control your fall in order to avoid any contact with the net or entering into the opponent's court, as this would be counted as a foul. Land on your front foot, then uncurl your toes and gently bend your knees. Blocking is the best way to destabilize an attack, so adapt your block according to the match situation. Over to you. So there are three types of serve, depending on how a player hits the ball. The first one is underhand serve, wherein the player holds the ball below the waist just above the knee that are bent. The second one is the top speed. A player tosses the ball high enough and hits the underside of the ball in a snapping motion. The last one is the overhand serve in which a player holds the ball at above eye level and tossing it high enough to hit in a downward swing. For clear understanding about underhand serve, watch this video. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to go over the underhand serve. Now, this is great for young kids or beginners, but even if you've been playing volleyball for a long time and haven't yet mastered the overhand serve, this is a great place to start. We're gonna break the underhand serve into three parts. The hold, the step, and the swing. So, 
when you're starting, you want to make sure that you hold the ball in your opposite hand from your hitting hand. So if you're left-handed, you're going to hold the ball in your right hand. And if you're right-handed, you're going to hold the ball in your left hand. What we want to do is we want to hinge at the waist and hold the ball straight down in front of our hitting shoulder. So since I'm left-handed, I'm holding the ball in my right hand, my arm is straight down, and I'm just bending a little bit, making sure the ball is lined up with my left shoulder. So from the side, it looks like this. I'm hinging at the waist and the arm is straight down. The next step is the step. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're stepping with the opposite foot to the hand we're hitting. So I'm hitting with my left, I'm going to step with my right. If you're right-handed, you're going to step with your left because you're hitting with your right. As we step, we want to bring our hitting arm back. So we're here in our ready position. We're going to step and our hitting arm goes back. Hold, step. Okay, from the front, the ball is in front of my hitting shoulder. I'm holding it, step. Notice that my arm, my hitting arm is swinging straight back like a pendulum. Once you feel comfortable with how to hold the ball and step, the third part is to actually hit it. For an underhand serve, you can hold your hand however you want. You can go with a flat hand and hit the ball like this. You can tuck your fingers and hit the ball like that or you can open your hand a little more and contact on the heel of your hand like this. Now that we feel comfortable holding the ball and taking that step we've decided how we're going to hold our hand the next part is to actually hit it. Now it's so important to make sure that you watch the ball as you're hitting it. Okay, because if you're looking somewhere else, you could make bad contact. So you're gonna swing through and just on contact, you're gonna remove the hand holding the ball. Okay, so hold, step, swing. The last thing is to make sure when you swing, you swing straight through the ball because if not, it could hit the side of your hand and that won't be pretty. So here we go. Hold, step, swing. Hold, step, swing. I hope this video helps you feel a little bit more comfortable practicing your underhand serve. Obviously, we want to progress to an overhand serve, and you can find that video right here. But until then, keep practicing, whether you're in the gym or in your own backyard. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure to leave me a comment below. But until then, be sure to subscribe to this channel and like this video, and stay tuned for some more volleyball content. Thanks. Another video for overhand serve. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to go over how to overhand serve a volleyball for beginners. Um, this could also be called a standing float serve, but we are going to go over the basics and hopefully get you serving by the end. We're going to break down the overhand serve into two parts. We're going to do the toss and the arm swing. In my opinion, the toss of the serve is the most important part. And if that is not consistent, it's gonna be really, really hard to serve the ball over the net. So, if you're right-handed, you're gonna to toss the ball with your left hand. If you're left-handed, you're gonna to toss the ball with your right hand. Like with passing, you wanna make sure that your arm is straight out in front of you. You don't wanna bend it and you want to make sure that your wrist is flat. By flicking the wrist, that creates some different spin on the ball, and we just want to think about laying it up in front of us. 
One of the big things about a toss is to make sure that you're always tossing the ball in front of your hitting shoulder. So, if you're right-handed, you wanna make sure that you're able to swing straight through the ball, staying upright by tossing it in front of that shoulder. We don't wanna be leaning one way or another or forward and back. We wanna be upright and tall and be able to come straight through the ball when we're striking it. So to start, we're just gonna work on our toss. If you look at my feet, my natural stance for serving is to have my right foot forward. And you'll notice that I have a slight triangle shape that's perfectly lined up with my hitting shoulder. This is a great tool to see if your toss is on target. So if you're left-handed, you wanna start with your right foot slightly forward. And if you're right-handed, you wanna start with your left foot slightly forward. We're gonna work on the toss and the goal is for it to land in this triangle right in front of our hitting shoulder. Perfect. You want to let it drop and it's totally okay to spend time doing this because once you get this dialed in, the rest of the serve is so much easier. Another thing to think about is the height of the toss. We want the toss, if we have our hitting arm fully extended, we want the toss to be about an arm and a half's length above our head. We don't need to toss it super, super high because then the room for error gets a lot bigger. And we don't wanna to toss it low because we wanna make sure our arm is extended when we're hitting. If we toss it low, our elbow will be bent and we don't want that. So let's aim for one to two arms length above our head with the toss. Once you've worked through your toss several times and you feel like it's super consistent, then we can think about the arm swing. The way I like to think about the arm swing is like a bow and arrow. When we're doing archery, we have the bow and we pull our arm back to release. It's a very similar concept with serving and actually with hitting too. We wanna have our elbow really drawn back and we want it to be high at our ear, okay? A lot of people drop their elbow down here. It's really hard to get any type of power when your elbow's down. So we wanna think bow and arrow, pull it back, elbow high. Once we're in this position, the only place that we have to go on the serve is forward. So I like to think bow and arrow to throw. And that's the motion that we want our arm to follow on the arm swing. On contact, we want to feel like we're giving the ball a super aggressive high five. Okay, so to do that, we need a nice big hand. We want contact on our palm. And we want to make sure our wrist is strong. We don't want to snap our wrist over top because that's what gives the ball a lot of spin. By keeping the wrist really strong, and big contacting on the palm, that is what will give the ball a nice float when it comes across the net. And finally, when we're serving, we want to think about stopping our arm on contact. So by reaching high, strong wrist, and popping it at the top, we're going to give the ball a really nice trajectory and make it move, which is really tough for the passers. Now it's time to put it together the toss with the arm swing. So the way I like to think about the rhythm of a float serve is to toss, step, swing. So this is what it should look like. As you'll notice, I'm starting with my arm back even before I toss. And the reason for that is after I toss, my arm only has one way to go, and that's forward. By starting with my arm down, 
I'll have to bring it back and then forward, and I'm losing a lot of time, which means that the ball has a chance to drop too far. So I always recommend starting with your arm up so that you can go out and get the ball. Another thing you'll notice is that every single time I'm serving, I'm taking a step. So as a lefty, I'm taking my step with my right foot. If you're right-handed, you want to take your step with your left foot. And the reason for that is you can really engage your core by taking that step, and it helps generate some momentum to help push the ball over the net. The important thing to think about, though, is if you're taking the step, your body is gonna catch up with your toss. So you wanna make sure that you're tossing it far enough in front of you so that your body can get there and you're not underneath the ball. Your hand position when you're hitting should be here every time. You wanna be close to the ball with it slightly in front of you. So this is a good marker. You don't want to be too far under the ball like this, and you don't want to have it too far in front. So sometimes, if you're not getting enough power, you might have tossed it too far behind you, or if you're missing in the net, the toss might be too far forward. So it's always a good idea to maybe film yourself when you're getting started to see what those errors might be. There are several common mistakes I see with beginner servers when they're first getting started. The first one is that they don't take a step or they might even take a step with the wrong foot. Now as a lefty, if I'm stepping with my left, my whole body twists, which will throw off my entire serving rhythm. So it's always important to step with the opposite foot from your hitting hand. A second common mistake and very common one is revolving around the toss and an inconsistent toss, whether it be too far to the left or the right, too low, too far forward. You need to take time to develop a nice consistent toss because that makes all the difference in the world. And the third common mistake I see is people following through with their arm or snapping their wrist and that brings the ball into the net. So always think really big hand, really strong wrist, and to stop on contact. So hopefully these serving tips will help you learn how to do a nice overhand serve. Um, if you have any questions, be sure to let me know because I love to help. But until then, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment to this video and stay tuned for the next one. See ya. Also, passing can be done in two ways. It can be done using a four, forearm pass, wherein the player brings his or her arm together to make a platform where the ball will rebound. The second one is the overhead pass, which is also known as setup, and it is usually done by the tosser. It is a preparation for a spike by another player of the team. Watch this video about four R. Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to go over the basics of passing. Now, some people call it passing, you might know it as bumping, whatever you call it, we're going to teach you for all of you beginners out there, how to do it right. Since we pass with our arms, that is where we're going to start. So the most important thing is that you want to create a really flat surface with your thumbs. So this is the base. What you do with your hands after that is up to you. Some people like to lay them over each other and fold. Some people like to make a fist with one hand and cup around the other side. Um, those are the most two most common ways, but most importantly, your thumbs need to be together. 
the next, we want to make sure our arms are straight. We don't ever want to be bending our arms or having any break in the elbows when we're making contact. So we want to have a really straight surface. That is also why we want to keep our thumbs straight so that our arms are flat from elbow to hand. Now we want to make sure that we're contacting the ball on our forearm because that's the flattest surface. So when we're passing, we want to make sure that the ball is landing right here every single time. Your hand has a lot of bones and it might get a little uneven. So that's why we want to create a nice solid platform and contact surface. When we're passing, a huge thing that a lot of beginners do is they swing their arms because they think that that's where the power of a pass comes from. But in reality, the pass power comes from your body. So a way to train this is to have a person tossing and the passer is going to be on one knee. Okay? We're going to get in position with our hands correct and we're just going to touch the ball back. No arm movement. We're just going to lean forward with our body like this. Notice that my hands stay in front of my knee and they never come down by my body. My hands are away from my body the whole time, out in front of my knee, and I'm pushing through by using the strength of my legs. Once you're comfortable with your platform and using your body to generate the power, then we can get to our feet and start moving when we pass. Now let's think about when we're running. Our hands are apart and we move like this. We don't put our hands together and then try to run. The same concept applies to volleyball. We want to move with our hands apart and then put our hands together to make the skill. So we're going to start in the middle and we're just going to have a ball toss to either side. Notice that I'm moving with my hands apart, stop when I pass, and I'm leaning in with my body. Once you get comfortable with this, you can start mixing it up a little bit. You can move in different directions. You can move forward and back and side to side. You can go off the wall and see how many times you can keep it going. You can increase the pace of the toss. The, po the possibilities are endless, but it's so important to remember the fundamentals of your platform, not swinging the arms and moving with our hands apart. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Be sure to like, subscribe and comment with any questions you have but be sure to stay tuned as we progress through the skills thanks a lot another video for overhead pass hi you guys welcome back to my channel Today we are going to learn the basics of setting. Now you might know it as setting, some people call it volleying, but whatever you call it, this is the skill we're working on today. When we're setting, hand positioning is super important. So the way that I like to think about it is that I'm holding on to a big jug and I'm pouring it onto my head. That is how you want your hands to be, nice and close to your forehead with your hands big and your fingers spread apart. Okay, notice that my elbows are bent. Okay, this is what's gonna help me extend through the ball and get power to push my set outside. To get the feel of our hands on the ball during a set, we're gonna start on our knees and a person is gonna toss to us, we're just gonna catch it in the setting position and push it back. together at the same time and I'm catching it with a nice bent elbow. Once you've gotten that feeling down and catching it on your fingertips, same position but then you can start to push it with a quicker release. setting, you want
want there to be no spin on the ball. A little bit of spin is allowed indoor, but a nice smooth set comes out of your hands without any movement. I mentioned that when we set that we want the ball to come out without any spin. The way to do that is to make sure that we're following through with our hands going in the same direction. A lot of beginners really like to flip their wrists when they're setting to finish, but we want to make sure our hands are strong and finishing together in the setting position. Once you feel good with your hand contact on the ball, then we can get to our feet. Now, similar to what we discussed with passing, it's so important to move with your hands down and move naturally and put our hands up once we get to the ball. When we're setting, it's so important to make sure that our feet are directly under the ball because we're contacting it right above our head. When we get to the ball, we want to approach with our legs slightly bent and one foot a little bit in front of the other. We want to make sure our legs are bent because our legs, just like with passing, are so important in generating the power of our set so that we can extend with our arms and our legs at the same time. Okay, you guys, that is the basics of setting. I really hope you found that helpful. Once you get comfortable with these basics, then you can start trying some of the wall drills and partner drills that I posted in some earlier videos. But if you enjoyed this, please be sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and make sure to let me know if you have any questions because I'd love to help. I'll see you later. So that's it for today. I hope you've learned a lot about volleyball and somehow you become interested in playing this game. So goodbye. See you next meeting. God bless.